Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, our number today, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Jacob Liberman. We'll be talking about his book, Luminous Life. Dr. Liberman, Luminous Life. Dr. Liberman has been uh, writing books about uh, light for many years, I read Light Medicine of the Future probably 10 years ago or eight years ago anyway. Uh, and Dr. Liberman is going to be talking about how the science of light unlocks the art of living. You know, if you've listened to this program that I'm a big believer in sunlight and uh, I was very excited to get Dr. Liberman's book. He talks a lot about what sunlight really is in terms of how we live our lives. Everything we eat comes from, everything we eat, we eat to derive the energy that uh, comes from the sun. Our food is really, at its energetic level, little rays of sunlight. And when we eat food, we're eating the sun, the energy derived from the sun. All energy comes from the sun. That's the importance of, uh, of the sun for life, for living, and of course for good health. Dr. Liberman will be talking about that. At the bottom of the hour, we'll get your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you're advertised or recommended on The Bright Side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can purchase Longevity products by calling 866-735-2470, or you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also sign up off, off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we've been talking about ways to stimulate the skin, to turn on the skin, to activate the skin, to turn on the secretion of connective tissue, collagen that everybody loves so much, and high hyaluronic acid, these uh, um, thickening proteins and sugars and various molecules that are in the lower levels of the skin that give the skin its beefy, healthy-looking quality. Blood supply is part of the connective tissue. We talked about how you can stimulate skin cells, get a stronger stratum corneum barrier. The stratum corneum is the surface of the skin, the barrier of the skin. And I don't, uh, lest anyone thinks that this is just about anti-aging and wrinkles when we talk about turning on the secretion of connective tissue fibers, these are also effective strategies for treating dry skin as well. Not just... This is not just about keeping wrinkles at bay, although, yes, indeed, you'll improve fine lines and you'll improve wrinkle formation or, or you'll reduce wrinkle formation. You'll improve the appearance of wrinkles when you strengthen the skin, thicken the skin using these stimulating strategies. But you can also improve dry skin as well. You can improve every marker of health in the skin by stimulating it, every marker. So this is not just for anti-aging. It's not just for anti-wrinkle. It's also for 
skin lightening, for moisturization, for eliminate, uh, eliminating blotchy, blemished skin. Everything you want in a cosmetic product you will get when you stimulate the skin with a washcloth, with a dry brush, with microdermabrasion, with uh, my favorite way to stimulate the skin. My favorite ingredient for stimulating the skin is alpha hydroxy acids, low pH acidic substances. These are acids that are found in all cells. I love working with alpha hydroxy acids. The, the most important one, as ever, many of you have heard of, is, is glycolic acid, also lactic acid. These are a family of acids called alpha hydroxy acids, and they are incredibly incredibly helpful for skin health. There's so many articles and so many studies and the results that I've seen myself over the course of almost 25 years of using this stuff. I bought my first drum of glycolic acid in uh, 1993. How many years ago was that? 25 years. I bought my first drum of glycolic I bought $400 I spent for, which was a lot of money for me back then, for a 55 gallon drum of glycolic acid and I dug into that drum of glycolic acid for maybe two years, making cleansers and toners. I had in my pharmacy, I was making prescription products with it. And I was just absolutely blown away by the kind of anti-aging and skin health benefits people were getting from glycolic acid products that I was making. I actually built a whole skincare company based on that. The stuff is absolutely unbelievable for a lot of reasons. Number one, it works. And when I say it works, I mean it improves skin health. And when I say it improves skin health, that means anti-aging, skin lightening, everything, moisturization, everything you want from a, a skincare product, you'll get with a glycolic acid product. But even better, or, or along with that, I don't want to say even better, but just as good, is the fact that it's so non-toxic. It's completely non-toxic. The stuff's found in every cell of your body. You could drink it. Now... I'm not going to say it's not aggressive. It can be aggressive, but that's just, you know, one man's aggressive is, or one woman's aggressive is one man or woman's uh, stimulating. I say stimulating. Yeah, if you overuse it, you overstimulate, you could have a problem. If you go to the gym too much, you could have a problem too. That doesn't mean you don't, don't ever go to the gym. It means you watch, you, you want to be paying attention to how much you're stimulating controlled stimulation, like we said, controlled wounding, controlled stimulation. Alpha hydroxy acids are so benign because they're everywhere. They're in your skin. They're in your skin cells. They're in all cells. They're used by biology or by, by biological systems to process energy. They're energy processing. So any cell that is processing energy, which is to say all cells, uses alpha hydroxy acids as an inherent part of their biochemistry. So they're everywhere. They're especially found in fruits. Why? Because fruits are so rich in sugar, and sugar is high energy. They're actually called fruit sugar acids. That's their colloquial, colloquial name, fruit sugar acids. We call them alpha hydroxy acids scientifically, fruit sugar acids. You may have heard that term. They're found in fruits. They're found in vegetables. They're found in plants. They're found in every living system. So these fruit acids act to pump cytokines out of the skin cells, out of the keratinocytes, which are, is the technical name for, for skin cells. Keratinocytes, skin cells, are like little cytokine factories. And it's these cytokines that are responsible for the immune responses that can show up uh, when you have a rash or when you have a sensitivity, we have itching or redness, pain. These are all part of, uh, a, or these are all reflections or results of cytokine release. That's why sometimes people will get these reactions from alpha hydroxy acids, rashes, itching, redness, because uh, they're releasing too many cytokines. They've overstimulated. It's a cytokine response. But if you just tickle the skin cell, if you just lightly drop the pH, this is where the controlled part of controlled stimulation comes from, if you just lightly tickle it, you'll get just the right amount of cytokines to stimulate a healing response. When the keratinocyte is threatened and a drop in pH is, in, is interpreted as a threat, any, there's lots of things that can interpret, the keratinocyte can interpret as a threat, the mosquito bite is interpreted as a threat, it'll release its cytokines and if you do it just right, you could turn on it and activate growth processes in the skin, healing processes in the skin, health processes in the skin. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 
Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 842 3660 is our number. We'll get your calls here this segment. We'll continue talking alpha hydroxy acids, my favorite ingredient for stimulating the skin, on our next Bright Side episode at the bottom of the hour. In our next segment, we'll be talking to Dr. Jacob Liberman about his book, Luminous Life, How the Science of Light Unlocks the Art of Living. Dr. Liberman, as myself, is a lover of light, lover of the light. Heliophobia is one of the great myths of our time, being afraid of the sun. I shouldn't say heliophobia, but fear of the sun, the, the idea that the sun is somehow a demon in the sky bent on our destruction is a uh, is one of the unfortunate myths of our times and the more sun you could get without burning you don't want to burn but the more sun you get the better off you're going to be even to the point of getting a sun lamp especially if you're vitamin d deficient i like vitamin d vitamin d from a sun from the sun or a sun lamp is really the best way to get your vitamin d not vitamin d supplements even food even food vitamin d is not as effective as the kind of vitamin d that you get from uh, from uh, a sun lamp or from the sun. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Paula in Texas. Good morning, Paula. Welcome to the Bright Side. Paula, hey, Paula. Hey, good morning. Can you hear me again? I hear you loud and clear. What's going on? Oh, great. Well, you know, I use your health care product for about eight months now. Well, and um, I have a couple of questions after listening to your latest shows. You're, okay. You're talking uh, about longevity? No, yours. Your specific. Oh, the truth treatments. The truth treatments, yes. Okay, great. What are you What are you finding? Um, well, I love the way my skin feels. Um, I still have a lot of digestive issues, so it's not as pretty as I'd like it, but I'm working on it. So. Okay, but you understand the digestive connection to, to exactly, skin health. Exactly, yeah. Good, good for oh, you. Yeah, yeah, I've overcome a lot of stuff, you know, autoimmune and chronic fatigue. All those are gone, and now I'm just still working on digestion. Um, it's a process, and it's taken forever, but... That's okay. Okay, so tell so me how I, I can help to, you. Um, so can I dry brush my face? I dry brush every morning before I get in the shower. I yeah. Heck yeah. Don't okay. irritate. You know, don't go, don't irritate it at all. I mean, you'll know if you do it too much. It's great stimulation for the skin and also for the lymph. Okay. Also for the lymphatic, yeah. excuse me, for the lymphatic system, dry brushing helps move things along. Right. Real wonderful, wonderful okay. anti-aging strategy. Good for you. Well, good. And then um, I've been when I first started using the retinol, I, I couldn't use it every day, but now I can. So you, you wait, 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 wait. You're talking about my Truth Retinol five percent gel. It, yeah. You're yeah. using it every day. Yeah. At first, it made my skin red, but now it's not. Is it not? Sick? That's pretty amazing. That you know, if you ever told a doctor that, a dermatologist that, they they would think you were lying. That's almost impossible. You're using yeah. you're well, using well, my Truth Retinol five percent gel every day. That's got a bunch of retinol. That's good for you. No, it's good for you. If your skin is doing good, don't worry about it. It's great. The more you use, the better. But uh, you do want to make sure that your your skin gets a chance to recover because that recovery is really okay. when the. But but one day maybe a recovery for you. I don't know if your skin's doing okay. if your if your skin's doing well, then it's doing well. Then you don't you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, I well, I've never heard anybody use it every day. You know that's for, but that's great. Yeah. That's well, that's an night. amazing I thing. Yeah. Or every night, yeah. Well, well good for you. This was also something that was interesting because uh, originally you had said um, to exfoliate, so I'm thinking, oh, that means I need to do a peel. So I did the vi peel, vi peel, and okay. I didn't, I did not peel except for you know, and it was the phenol, but I, I felt like the other ingredients were natural enough. Did you use? Um, I, did you use the vi peel after you'd been using the retinol for a little bit? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, well, that's I probably that's why. why I didn't that's, peel. Yeah, exactly. You're you're peeling every day. You're peeling in small okay, amounts good. every day, so you're not getting okay, the big good. peel because you're peeling, you know, regularly. The big peels happen when you have an, when you have an accumulation of dead cells on the surface. That's when you get the big peels. But if you do it regularly, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So there's not a lot there to peel. Well, I'm not going to do any more peels. Then I'm just going to keep using your stuff. Good for so. you. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you and, called, Paula. And then. Yeah. Um, one more question. Do I have one more quick question? Sure. So when you said to use the washcloth, so I'm using it on my face to stimulate the um, connect tissue. I'm using a wet washcloth. Can I use coconut oil as my cleanser with the wet washcloth? Coconut oil is good, but it won't. You won't get. You know, you, you'll reduce some of the friction. But coconut oil is good, okay, though. So, yeah. What? Put so coconut oil use on it. The wet I would put. Well, you could do it any way. You know, both ways are great. Put some coconut oil on the skin. 
and then kind of okay. rub it off with the with the uh, the washcloth. And as it rubs off, the coconut oil rubs off. You'll get some exfoliation with the washcloth. That's not a bad idea. Okay, but if I wasn't using coconut oil, I would just use a damp washcloth. Damp Everything washcloth. So. Yep, damp washcloth. Okay. You know, you could use a dry washcloth too. It's a little more aggressive, but you could do that too. Oh, okay. It'd be like dry. Okay. It'd be like dry brushing. Okay. Perfect. I'll okay. Do that. Well, thank thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks, Paula. Have a great day. Right. Bye. Okay, let's go to California and say good morning to Glenn. What's going on, Glenn? Good morning. Hey, I'm uh, wondering about long-term use of triamterine. Uh, well, it's not, it, it's not one of the worst drugs in the world. It's not as bad as the beta blocker drugs, but it's still a diuretic, and you're going to lose, uh, you're going to lose minerals, and you're going to throw off kidney health. You, you, you're going to, you're going to, it works at the level of the kidney, so you're not going to do your kidney any good. That's for sure. It, it's based, but it's not. There's worse ones. There's worse ones, definitely. Triamterine is said to be potassium sparing, so you don't lose your potassium as much. But anytime you compel the body to do something it doesn't want to do, that's not only is it a bad strategy, and I'm not saying this for you, I'm saying this for, your, for the model, for the medical model. Not only is it a bad strategy, it's a dumb strategy. All right? Not only is it unhealthy, it's just stupid. Why is it stupid? Because it's like saying, uh, we're going to force the body to do what we want it to do against, because we're smarter than the body. That's stupid. Okay? And I'm not saying you are. I don't mean that to you. I mean the model. Okay? So don't, I don't, okay. don't take this the wrong way. Uh, the, 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 model would, the medical model would do that and compel the body to do something it doesn't want to do. It's just dumb to me. What you want to do if you've got high blood pressure, you're doing it for blood pressure, right? Right. All right. You want you want to figure out why your blood pressure is high. It's exactly. not. That's it. You know, it's a response. It's a reaction. So why is the blood pressure high? Well, a couple main reasons. Number one, sugar, which acts as a stressor, also can screw up the kidneys. Interestingly, high blood pressure in many times it can be a kidney problem, and then they give you a drug that affects your kidneys. This is the dumb, the stupidity of it. So uh, sugar for one, and then stress, relaxation. So what you want to do is you want to reduce your sugar. And then you want to relax the body. And relaxing the body happens psychologically and physiologically. And when I say physiologically, I'm talking about relaxing the muscles. I'm talking about deep breathing. And I'm also talking about correcting digestive issues, which can spike cortisol and raise blood pressure. So you got you to gotta handle it. It goes back to the triangle of disease. You handle your business at the level of stress by relaxation. Uh, reducing your sugar and controlling uh, any kind of, or, or reducing any issues you have with, with uh, digestion. And that means food intolerances, excuse me, leaky gut, patching up the gut, all those kinds of things. Do you have anything else going on or is it just blood pressure? Well, the only other thing I was going to ask you about was the... Um, no, no. What I mean is do you have any other health, do you oh, have any no, other health, no. health things? Yeah, no, sometimes we... you may be fine. Sometimes doctors, when they give you a blood pressure drug or when they try to lower your blood pressure, are going by guidelines. And it's not their fault because they pretty much have to go by guidelines. It's like they're legally mandated to go by guidelines. It's part of whatever doctor oath they take is that they're going to follow the rules. And the rules are if your blood pressure is a certain, uh, at a certain height or at a certain level, um, you have to give them drug. You have, to, you have to drop it. That's the rules. So it's not his fault necessarily, but there's a better ways to drop your blood pressure. And you may not even need to do it because the guidelines don't work for everybody. They're guidelines. That's what a guideline is. It's approximation. All right, Glenn, got to go. We got to take a break. And we got Dr. Liberman coming, off, coming up uh, in our next segment. Dr. Joe, uh, Jacob Liberman talking about his book, Luminous Life. Don't go. Kiss. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. You can find longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. Got news stories, blog posts, videos, all kinds of health information, and the longevity products as well at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. And I am very, very excited to have my next guest on. I've been following his work for many years, Dr. Jacob Liberman, who is the author of a new book called Luminous Life. He's been studying light and writing about light since the 90s anyway. I first read, I first read Light Medicine of the Future about 10 years ago. And uh, Dr. Liberman, Liberman understands, as you guys know, if you've listened to this program for any length of time, how powerful and important light is especially the light that comes from the sun. And we're going to talk to Dr. Liberman about uh, light, 
The Key to Optimal Health, and his book, Luminous Light. Welcome to the Bright Side, Doc. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm totally honored. I've been following your work for many years, and I'm very excited to talk to you about this, uh, about your book, um, Luminous Light. Before I even get into this, I, was, I noticed that, uh, that your foreword was by Dr. James Oshman. For the listeners, Dr. Oshman is the master of connective tissue, one of the first, well, the man when it comes to understanding connective tissue. What is the relationship between light and the connective tissue, Doc? Well, <clears throat> every function of the body is light-dependent. The way that the body literally communicates is through the interaction of signals of light, biophotons, if you will. And so there isn't any function of the body that is not intricately related to light because light is the most powerful environmental factor. It is continually cueing every cell of our body so that that cell orchestrates its internal functions in order to synchronize itself with Mother Nature. So the primary purpose of light is to upgrade the software of our humanity, wow. just as, you know, when we have our uh, working on our computers and every two or three weeks we get a software upgrade, which sort of brings our our computer functioning up to whatever the state of the art is, the same exact thing is happening with the body on a continual basis, and light is providing that that upgrade and that guidance. Would you say light is a kind of structuring force or information, a type of information? Well, it's more than information. Uh, it is information, but it is the fundamental energy from where everything emerges. Mm. This is why the renowned theoretical physicist David Bohm said, all matter is frozen light. I love that. Light, yeah, light has the potential for everything that exists. So at a fundamental level, we know that everything is just energy. If you go to that most fundamental energy that exists, that's light, and that's from where life literally emerges how does the fact that how does the fundamental nature of light impact its ability to to modify or somehow um control our health or have an effect on our health well it's um here's a perfect example <clears throat> uh you're in colorado yep okay so you know in colorado you have four seasons. You have creatures that live out in the wild. What is it that cues every mm. creature and every plant in nature about the uh, changes that are about to occur or that are continually occurring in Mother Nature? The bear or the deer does not wait for the first snowfall in late October or November and then say, oh my gosh, I didn't go to Target and get my overcoat. He's, there okay. is something that is continually cueing the cells of that creature's body, and I mean every single cell, wow. so, that the, so that the cell is continually harmonizing with life itself so that the interior of that creature and what we call mother nature are one and so and the reason that exists is because every cell of the body i mean the trillions of cells in the body literally have eyes and these eyes are designed to detect and respond to light now let me explain that a little bit well, before further. you go there before you go there you're yeah. saying that all cells have photoreceptors Yes. All cells, even internal cells that have no, that are nowhere near the light, they have photoreceptors. All internal cells have photoreceptors. And you just said something, which is, which are nowhere near the light. There's a major misconception. We believe light is something that can be seen, but mm. it cannot. Light is oh, actually great. totally invisible. Oh, that's, that's very good. Very good. Light is merely an infinite potentiality 
for anything that exists. What we call brightness during the day is a perceptual phenomenon. Based the, brain, on the brain's interpretation somehow? The brain and mind and what we call consciousness, which creates the appearance of what we call the external world. So we assume that everyone sees what we see. But, you know, 10 observers looking at the same thing, each mm. experience something differently. And if you then go to other kinds of creatures that have different perceptual phenomenon, they don't at all see the world well, that we see. Are you saying we so, organize We organize light, light is neutral and inert, and we organize it based on our own minds and, and brains? Is that what you're saying? And all creatures organize it somehow. Take this inert yeah. substance and organize it. Yes, and let me see if I can explain that a little bit further. You know that we say um, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to see it or to, to hear it, does it make a sound? Uh, well, no. You see, it, and the reason it doesn't, it, it doesn't make a sound. It needs a receiver. That, it needs a receiver, and the receiver must have a functioning ear. Mm. And, and must have mm. something called consciousness to go That's with great. it. That's great. If that does not exist, all There's that no exists sound. Is, is friction and energy that has moved. The same thing is true for vision. That's Light great. is everywhere in the environment, but without a receiver that has an eye and consciousness attached, mm -hmm. the world that we experience is not there. There's something else. There is just energy there. How, how, so, yeah. Doc, that's that's so past. Like, there's nothing more powerful than that statement you just made in terms of how, how we live our lives. I want you to talk right. about how that impacts health in a, a mundane way, uh, in terms of how light works in a mundane way to impact health, but also in a more philosophical way, to, uh, taking into account what you just said, how we receive light based on what we expect or what we believe to be true and how we can use that for our health. We'll do that when we come back from our break. Thank you, Dr. Liberman. Sure. We'll be right back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Dr. Jacob Liberman about his book, Luminous Life. We'll be back with uh, more good health information and Dr. Liberman right after this break. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Jacob Liberman, author of the book Luminous Life, as well as uh, Light Medicine of the Future. Dr. Liberman, are you there? Yes. Hey, so before we went to break, we were talking about this inert, not inert, but blank nature of light and how we kind of structure it in our own image, maybe you could say. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be all, go all uh, religious here, but... Essentially, essentially, that is what occurs. Okay, so now how can we use that fact, which I find very profound, by the way, how can we use that fact to impact our health? Well, it's using us. Let me see if I can explain. When most people think of light, they think of the impact of light on a plant. That's pretty obvious. Everybody knows that. Or they think of the fact that light interacts with the eyes in order for us to see. But when light interacts with the eye, it literally catches the eye. It literally grabs the attention of the eye, causing the eye to effortlessly and reflexively move toward the light. Mm. What does that light essentially do at that moment? When the eye and the light merge, that instance is called presence. Oh the gosh. purpose of that movement is literally to guide movement. The primary purpose of light is to guide the movement of the organism. And so the light grabs the attention of the eye, the eye reflexively moves towards the light, the body then reorients itself, and that which is called the eye, or caught the eye, literally is guiding it the next step that it needs to take to get out of the way, to move in the direction it needs to move. In other words, what catches our eye is literally guiding our life. Now let's take that a little bit further. Most of the light that enters the eye has nothing to do with eyesight. 
It has to do with powering the body. It has to do with cueing the most important parts of the brain that control the nervous system, the endocrine system, the immune system, and so on, letting it know what time of the day is it, what time of the year is it, am I in Colorado or Maui or Istanbul, and based on that, each cell of the body then harmonizes itself with Mother Nature. But it doesn't stop there with the eyes. There's a function going on throughout the body because all the cells can detect and respond to light. And this is called photobiomodulation. In other words, modulation of our biology via light. And what's going on is the light is continually cueing the body about what time of the day is it, what time of the year is it, where am I in the world? Because our biology must be synchronized with that particular function. Here's well, a that- perfect example. Let me just give you this one example. You fly from Colorado to London, you feel out of sorts for a number of days. Everybody knows that. That's called jet lag. That jet lag is a mismatch Hmm. between where your body was based on the information from light and now where your body is in a totally different time zone. Everybody can relate to that mismatch or feeling out of sorts. We actually don't feel well when we have jet lag. What's interesting is most people are chronically jet lag but have never left their home on a trip because they're living life according to their ideas about life or their beliefs versus allowing light to guide them in the same way the light guides every plant and every animal. So light is continually guiding our biology and moving us in the direction we need to move in the same way it does it for a plant or for a migratory bird or for a whale that's moving from Alaska to Maui each year. And it does that absolutely perfectly because what is timing that is also the same thing that's timing the rising and setting of the sun, the movement of the planets. In other words, light is the animating force that is moving everything in this universe. So what happened, what's the impact of all the lights that we have today that didn't exist 100 years ago or 200 years ago? The light pollution. Essentially, that light pollution is fooling our body. It is competing with the light of nature and cueing our body in ways that cause the body to get confused. So, for Mm -hmm. instance, one of the things we're all very aware of are the weapons of mass distraction that we call all of our technological advancements. Mm. They're very wonderful on one level. We can't live without them. We're all addicted to them. However, when we put on our cell phones at night or when we're looking at our monitors at night, what's happening is we are getting a spectrum of light which is very, very different from sunlight. And so, for instance, during the day when we're up and awake and very aware and attentive, it's because there's a high concentration of blue light in the solar spectrum during the day. That's why we're awake during the day. When you put on a light source that has high concentrations of blue at night, all Mm. of a sudden, your body knows it's dark, it's time to go to sleep, but the energy entering your eyes is basically saying, oh no, it's time to wake up. Mm. And so your body gets very confused, it starts turning on functions that normally would be on during the day, but it's actually at night. It causes sleep disturbance. It can uh, initiate obesity. It can change the way our bodies process glucose. It is absolutely endless. In fact, there's now even a relationship they're noticing with small amounts of light at night and depression. So it's a crucial aspect of our life. As I said before, light is the most powerful environmental factor we have. And 
uh, the main gist of this new book, Luminous Life, and why this is very different than light medicine of the future, my first book 26 years ago laid a foundation for the fact that we are creatures of light and basically gave many, many examples of how light could be utilized for healing and so on. This book is about living. This book is about the fact that in order to experience a luminous life, a radiant life, uh, a life that is where we literally are glowing, we have glowing health, uh, the way to experience that is to actually be living according to nature's laws rather than to the ideas that we call normal that are totally not natural. Bring that home practically. we got about two minutes. Bring that home in a practical way, practical things people can do to do that. Very practical things. Spend some time outdoors each day. My suggestion is that sometime between 10 and 2 or 3 in the afternoon, people go outside without their sunglasses, without uh, any sunscreens, just for a minute or two. And if they can remove their shirt or allow larger parts of their body uh, to receive the energy of light, that would be very powerful. If they then increase by one minute a day, up to a maximum of maybe 20 to 25 minutes, they will very, very much be impacted by that light. One of the main things that happens is vitamin D synthesis. What most people don't realize is almost every single disease of civilization, like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, macular degeneration, and even Alzheimer's, are related to vitamin D deficiency, which essentially means we're not getting enough light. Hmm. So if people can get outside and spend some time outdoors, it will make a huge difference. Another, The book speaks about many, many different facets, not just getting light, but it talks about consciousness. It speaks of presence in very, very different ways than you've heard before. It, it is really about the science of life, the, the fundamental science of life, uh, and provides a new understanding, new wisdom about things we speak about every day, but actually have a misconception about. Dr. Liverman, that was an awesome half hour. Thank you so, so much. Uh, do you have a website? I'll, I'll give the book out, yes. title of the book out. What's your website? Yes, people can go to jacoblieberman.org, and Lieberman is spelled L-I-B as in boy, E-R-M-A-N. Uh, thank you so, so much, Dr. Liverman. It's a pleasure to talk to you. It's an honor to talk to you. The book is Luminous Life, Dr. Uh, Jacob Lieberman, and uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks, Doc. Oh, we'll talk have to you again. Have a great day. You sure. too, buddy. Bye-bye. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.